Hello. My research question was how does feminism play a role in Expecting Isabel, which is the play that I read. So a little background, Expecting Isabel is a play about a married couple who is trying to conceive a child and they run into a lot of difficulties, the first of them being that um, the husband is unable to create sperm that's strong enough to penetrate an egg. Um, the second being all sorts of familial issues and relationship issues, financial issues, all that fun stuff that comes with being a parent. Um, so I found that feminism is more of like a subtle thing in the play. It's not like a major plot point. But I also find that the play is very forward with um, the way that women are treated in the play and with the way that women act in the play. A lot of them being strong, independent women who have their own jobs and don't really need a man in their life. The only reason that there probably is one is that they chose. So I figured that feminism would have been a really good topic to discuss. So my first point is that right off the bat we meet Miranda, who's our protagonist, who was raised in a waspy, middle, upper class-ish family. Um, she's a self-reliant woman in her 30s, working as a greeting card writer and creator, and she writes sympathy cards, which adds to a lot of the comedy in the play. There's a point where um, Miranda's asked, like, what is this by her boss? And the card says, P.S. Your cat died. I'm not joking. <laughs> um, she married Nick, who is 40 years old, um, which is significantly older than her. She's supposed to be in her 30s, some like sometime, somewhere in the mid to late 30s. And he doesn't have a job, which is exactly the point that I was getting to. Miranda has a seemingly good job and her husband doesn't work he's actually a failing like a starving artist and he's a sculptor and this gives us an indication that Miranda is the main breadwinner of the family and essentially just calls the shots for them and for the relationship um, Another point that I figured out is that Miranda's father isn't really um, present in the play. It's more of just her and her mother, which I think gives off the vibe that um, neither she nor her mother really need him because that it's not a big part of the plot that he's not there. Um, Miranda is unsure at first about having a baby. She goes as far as saying that if they have a child, the child's going to get poisoned while he's in, while he or she is in school during lunch by the lunch ladies. I don't really know why, but um, that's what she that's what she tells her husband, and eventually she warms up to the idea, and eventually she embraces the the she embraces the idea of having a child, and she actually starts saying that she wants a girl. While Nick says that he wants a boy. And um, it gets to the point where Miranda tells Nick to have sex with her in a certain way so that they can conceive a girl specifically. She reads in an, a fertility book that tells her, like, oh, do this if you want a girl, do that if you want a boy. And she goes for the girl. I don't really know how that biologically makes any sense, but <laughs> it's a play. Um, she, that's part, that's why the um, play is called Expecting Isabel, because she, she wants a girl and she names the girl, and the girl's name is Isabel. Oh my god. Um, I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> She wants her daughter to grow up confident and independent like her, like her, which makes sense. So Miranda starts to go through 
all of these different treatments and methods to have a baby, which, um, as we all know, if we're shot up with hormones, stuff happens. Physically, emotionally, mentally, stuff happens. She goes through multiple different hormonal treatments, which change her body, change her um, mentality, change her emotional state, which actually winds up getting her fired in the end. Um, she basically just yells at her boss because he's like, you're not doing anything correct. Um, and she quits. Quits. Um, my computer's dying. I think this um, shows that her will is very strong. She's very strong-willed and forward and, um, like, stone-ish, kind of. Not cold. She's a warm human being, but um, she's unbreakable. And when she wants something, she gets it. And she wants this baby girl, and she's going to have a baby no matter what. And she's not letting anything stop her. And she's so strong-willed that she doesn't care about what happens to her or her body as long as she gets her baby. Moving on, um, Nick's behavior to the play during the play also kind of adds to the feminine feel just because um, it's pretty clear from the first moment on that Nick and Miranda have gender-swapped in their relationship, so Nick is the submissive character while Miranda is the dominant, which I think is really cool. I've never read a I've never read a play like that, where the woman is the man and the man is the woman, and it it made for a very interesting comedy and a very forward, very new. It was good. <laughs> um, so Nick's behavior during the play adds to the indication that feminism is a part of the play as well. Nick, throughout the play, continuously shows that he is submissive um, in the relationship while Miranda's the dominant. Nick doesn't hold a steady job throughout the play. He's a failing artist. He doesn't get paid. He doesn't bring any of the money in. Um, at some point, he and Miranda discuss, like, um who um who's going to do this and who's going to do that and at some point they decide okay so for one year I'll hold a job for the next year you'll hold a job and we'll swap back and forth until the baby's grown up and then we'll have fun with our lives um I have to move on because I'm running out of time um I'll make one last point. The last point is that in this, in one particular scene, one of the minor characters acts up, which is really cool. Um, well, actually, two points at the marriage about the marriage counseling scenes in the play. One, there's a lesbian couple, and most of the time when we see an, a lesbian couple in a play, there's some kind of reaction towards it. So someone comments on them being lesbians or someone like is like so who's the man in the relationship or someone makes like a snide comment and someone says something that's like homophobic there's usually some kind of reaction towards the fact that there's a gay couple in the room like oh my god and everyone's completely oh another couple it's it's very quiet there, there's no like major plot twist with the point that there are two lesbians in the room and they're um, trying to adopt a child and they try to encourage Miranda like oh you should adopt a child it's a lot easier than going through all these fertility treatments and it's just like their words of wisdom come to Miranda and she takes it um, she eventually has her child and there's no, there's no mention of anyone hating on them because they're lesbians or anyone like being like, oh, gay rights, I'm for it too. It's another couple. Okay. Like it's really, it's 
really interesting. I thought for sure, as soon as I saw them, I'm like, oh my god, this is going to spiral downhill quickly. Nope. No reaction whatsoever. That's what happens in New York, I guess. The couple's from Manhattan. Um, I went over the time. So my last really quick point is that in one of the minor scenes, a minor character is at the marriage counseling group with her husband, and she can't she, he doesn't allow her to talk. And she tries to speak up. She's like, well, I think... And the the um, the husband would cough. And she'd shut up. She'd stop right there. And then she'd be like, well, I cough. Done. And eventually, she gets so tired of this that she actually just lashes out at him, saying, I'm going to talk whether you like it or not. And she starts talking... And then I start seeing why he told her not to talk. She, just for your entertainment, she sacrificed a melon to the fertility gods. You can't make this up. Um, she sacrificed a melon by putting her husband's pubic hair into the melon by slicing, she sliced it open stuck seven pieces of pubic hair from her husband into this is disgusting i know into the melon and then she put 27 pennies in the melon and then she wrapped it up and then she threw it in a river this leaves both the cast and the audience speechless i had to reread that entire scene because i didn't understand what was going on um but the feminism that you see there is that she's she finally says I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to you anymore. I'm going to speak because I have a right to speak. You can't tell me to shut up. And I think it would have been better if she just kept her mouth shut, but that's the point. The point is that she was able to speak. So those are my points on feminism in the play. I highly recommend this play. This play is hilarious. It's so fast paced. It's like that. You can't, you don't sit still. It's, the sets are constantly changing. The scenes are constantly changing. And at points it's really hard to follow along if you're reading it, but I feel like if you put it on stage, it's gonna look amazing. Um, minimal set, the cast is really cool. Um, but yeah, that was what I could find on feminism, and I think this play is like really, really ahead of its time. And I'm really hoping I get to see this play really soon. It's really cool. So yeah, read Expecting Isabel by Lisa Loomer. It's awesome. Bye!